Yang Sari's health had been declining for months. The former Khmer Rouge foreign minister had spent almost two months in hospital in 2012, <laughs> suffering heart problems, vertigo and other illnesses. Even after his discharge, he remained physically weak and was virtually bedridden. Born in 1925, he was the oldest of all the former senior leaders on trial for the deaths of almost two million people during the Khmer Rouge's rule in the 1970s. As the regime's foreign minister, he played a key role in persuading many exiled Cambodians to return home. Once they did, most found themselves imprisoned here at the Bung Trebek High School. Yung Sari was the first of the senior Khmer Rouge leaders to defect with his wife Yang Tirit from the regime. He was granted a royal pardon by the then King Sihanouk, but the UN-backed tribunal trying him and his former colleagues Nun Chia and Kyu Sampan did not recognize the pardon. Genocide researcher Yuk Chang says of the four senior leaders who originally stood trial, there was always a fear Yang Sari would escape prosecution. But his arrest showed there would be no impunity for Khmer Rouge leaders. Yang Sari, it's, uh, it's remembered as as a man that making profit out of genocide, that untouchable, protected by the King Amnesty, by Hun Sen's governments, have troops, have his own movements. He enjoyed the luxury out of the bloods of the victims, out of the revolutions. Yang Sari's death will be a blow to those like Yuk Chang who have spent years gathering evidence to bring the leaders to trial. The age and poor health of the defendants has been a major concern for all those involved in the trial proceedings. Survivors will undoubtedly see Young's death as another leader who got away. Stephanie Scowan, Al Jazeera.